So when I go ahead and start my seeds, there's one rule that I think is really important for you guys. So today I am going to be starting my pepper plant. So when I go ahead and start my seeds, there's one rule that I think is really important and that is to make sure that whatever soil you're using is sufficiently moist when you plant seeds in it. And there's a few reasons why this is really important. One, because it's going to support healthy germination of the seeds if the soil is already moist to begin with and it's going to stay moist for at least a couple of days that you don't have to worry as much about watering it at first when you're waiting for the early signs of germination. Once you notice it started drying out for things that take a while to germinate like peppers and maybe tomatoes or things like celery, then you're gonna wanna make sure that the soil continues to be moist by watering it. But I do really like to have it extra moist in the beginning so that it can really help that seed germinate. The other reason why having moist soil is really important is because it's going to make the soil more dense. And the reason why this matters is because dense soil is more packed with nutrients. They're going to be less likely to run out of nutrients quickly. So I have my bag of soil here. I'm using a potting soil that is packed with really nice compost. It's made with peat, very old, very old dry bark perlite enriched with compost and seaweed. So this is packed with nutrients and I prefer it over finding seed starting mix at the store because generally the only seed starting mix I can find when I'm going to the store real quickly is a major brand like Burpee or miracle Grow, and generally those don't have as many sufficient nutrients as something like this. Although you can find really good organic seed starting mix at your local garden store, it just might take a little bit more hunting. And there are places online too where you can find seed starting mix. That is great as well. I'll provide some links below if you're interested. So how much water do you actually want there to be in the soil? Well, you're going to want it to be almost cake-like. You want to be able to form a ball with it, but you don't want it to be dripping. I'll show you guys what that looks like. If it's not forming a ball and it's just falling apart, it's too dry, there are too many air pockets, your plants aren't going to be quite as happy. But if it's so wet, that there's water dripping, you're likely going to develop some mold, some other fungus, and your seed might actually rot before it germinates. So it's that perfect balance if you want it to be moist. You want a moist environment that allows that little seed to open up and release that plant, but not too wet that the seed rots. Once you have the soil nice and moist, like a cake and a ball that you can form, then you're going to go ahead and add your soil to your cells. Now you're going to make it nice and level across all of the cells, but then there's one more step you really want to do before you move on. And that is tamping it down, which basically means you go ahead and you take your tray, you take your cells, and you bang it on whatever surface you're using. You kind of let it settle as it should. And this is better than just pressing it down because you're letting the soil settle and fill in those air pockets naturally. When you press it down, you might be filling in air pockets a little too much and be making the soil a little too dense, but you also might be missing some air pockets that the soil would have naturally settled out if you had just let it hit hard on the surface. Once you have that soil tampered down and you have it filling in about 75% of your cells, there's just one more step between that and planting your seeds. I know one more step, but we're gonna get to planting the seeds in just a second. And that step is making sure you write out your labels and your markers beforehand, just so you're not trying to write with muddy, dirty hands, because it can get a little tricky, and you want to have them ready to go so you don't forget to place them in the cells, because I've done this so many times. I especially do this when I go to transplant and pot up into larger pots, and I always forget to mark them, and I'm like, oh, I can tell the difference, and then it's not until they're fruiting that I realize like, oh, whoops, I put this in the wrong place. I actually meant to put this with the other ones of that kind. Anywho, mark ahead of time. Have them ready to go. 
I have all my little pepper markers ready to go. I think there are about 16 of them. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put my markers right next to those cells and those trays so I can access them right when I need them and that way I don't forget what I put in a certain cell. Now I generally plant two seeds per cell. It's not a big deal if I have more than one plant germinating in a cell. I can always pot them up later and use both of those little seedlings. But I don't want like four or five, six pepper plants all coming up in one space because I'm going to run out of room. I don't have room for hundreds of pepper plants. So I am going to be cautious and just do two seeds per cell for my peppers. Peppers can have a little bit of a harder time germinating. They take a little bit longer and need some extra heat. So I'm going to be using a heat mat for my peppers. My favorite method of poking holes and to covering the seeds is actually just the back of a pen. Like a pen with a flat little round edge like a Sharpie or this little black pen. So what I'll do is I'll just make a little shallow, very shallow dent in the soil just so I know where to put those seeds. And I mean, it's gonna be really shallow, guys. Like just a tiny little bit of pressure. Plant the seeds and then I just cover them up with the smallest amount of soil. Okay, friends, so after you have those seeds covered with soil, all you have to do is go ahead and put your trays on your heat mat if you're using one. You can add a germination dome if you're using one. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take that tray and you're going to put it wherever you are starting your seeds. And you don't actually have to worry about adding light until those seeds germinate. Some things need light to germinate. I believe lettuce is one of those things that really needs light to germinate, but most things actually don't need light to germinate. But I will say, once it's been a couple days, I generally go ahead and turn the light on just so that the seedlings can get light as soon as possible, as soon as they come out of the soil to help create those strong seedlings. Now, a lot of people talk about using windowsills for seedlings, but I'm going to caution you with this, that oftentimes our window light is not enough. I have tried growing in windowsills using like TV tables positioned on a south window, and I still ended up with really leggy seedlings. So I'm just going to tell you that it totally depends on where you live and how your home is situated, but it's better to be safe than sorry, and there are definitely some great options for some inexpensive LED shop lights that you can use for your seedlings, and it's going to help them get plenty of light and be a lot stronger than maybe a window would provide. Another thing you might want to add into the equation once your plants germinate is a fan to help the seedlings grow even stronger and to also mirror the outside environment when it comes to windy days, which they're going to be facing once they go outside. So that's pretty much it, guys. Really, you're gonna to wanna to make sure they get plenty of light, the soil stays adequately moist, which can be a hard balance to find, but you'll learn as you go. And you're also going to want to make sure that as they're growing, you're trying to get them ready for what it will be like outside. So adding things like a fan. And then as the temperatures warm up outside, bring them out for a few hours every day so that they can get used to your environment. What are your favorite methods for starting seeds? Comment below, I would love to hear some different strategies that people are using all over the country and all over the world to create healthy, productive fruit and vegetable plants. Well, I can't wait to share my little pepper seedlings with you guys in probably seven to 10 days. We'll see how long they take. I am hoping they don't take quite as long because I am using the heating mat. It's not a problem that they do because I'm giving myself plenty of time for the growing season, which really won't be getting going until mid to late May when it comes to peppers. Now in the meantime, I'm going to be enjoying watching my southern and western friends planting their peppers probably in a month or so. I'll be a little bit of a green monster until I can plant mine. Again, I'm learning as I go too. I don't have all of this down, that's for sure, and there's a lot I can learn. But I will say that a lot of this information came from others that are much wiser than me when it comes to gardening, and I trust them wholeheartedly. There are so many different ways to garden, so I encourage you to find the way that works best for you, and to share that with people who are learning too, because that's the only way we're gonna learn new things is by trying new things. So go ahead and have a little fun. Experiment with some things that you haven't heard before or you haven't tried before. It's so fun having you guys a part of our Sunshine Farm family. I love sharing videos with you and I cannot wait to show you our spring and summer gardens as they take shape. I look forward to sharing my next video with you guys. Bye.
Thank you.